Hello guys, I'm Yadagar Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Absolute Beginners. In this video, I will explain about methods in Java. So what is meant by a method? Method is a block of code which contains a functionality. So for example, if you consider car as an example, the car will have some functionalities, right? Driving the car is a functionality, applying the brakes is a functionality, going in the reverse direction is a functionality, switching on the headlights is a functionality, right? So all these are called as functionalities of a car, right? So in the similar way, if you consider this car as an example of class inside the Java, so basically in the Java we have classes, methods and variables, right? So if you consider this car as an example of class inside the Java, then you need to provide all these functionalities also inside the class, right? That means you need to implement all the functionalities inside the class, okay? So here implementing means you need to write the code of these functionalities, right? So you cannot directly write the code inside the class, right? So you need to use some kind of a block for that and inside the block you need to write the code. So that block is nothing but the method, okay? So that is why I'm saying method is a block of code which contains a functionality, okay? So here this is the syntax for a method, okay? So if you look at this one, the first one is access modifier. Then we have static or non-static keyword, then return type and then method name. And after the method name, we need to open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis. Within the parenthesis, we need to pass the parameters. Okay, params is nothing but parameters. Then throws and we need to provide the exception list and open the curly braces and close the curly braces. So within the curly braces, we need to provide the method body. Okay, so now we will discuss about each and every of this keyword. Okay, so the first thing is access modifier. So what is been by access modifier? So for example, if you want to provide any visibility conditions to your method, like whether you want to access this method outside your class or not, or whether you want to access this method outside the package or not. So if you want to define any visibility conditions like that, then you can provide any access modifier here. Okay. So here access modifiers are actually four: public, private, protected, and default. Okay. And the next one is static or non-static. So the static or non-static is actually a big concept. So that we will actually discuss in our upcoming videos. But for now, just remember that if you want to call your method without creating any object of the class, then you need to go for the static. Okay. So when you create any method with static keyword, you no need to create any object for that method. You can directly call that method. So that is the static. So the non-static means it's quite opposite. So if you want to call any method by using object only, then you need to declare that as a non-static. Okay. So here we don't actually declare anything as non-static. I mean, there is no keyword as non-static. So if you want to declare any method as static, we need to write the keyword, but for non-static, we will just leave it empty. Okay. And the next one is return type. So here I'm performing some operations inside the method, right? So every method is providing some functionality. That means I'm performing some operations, right? So after performing the operations, if you want to return any value, then you need to use the return type. Okay. By default, it will be void. That means if you are not returning any value, then it will be void. So if you are returning integer value, you need to declare it as an integer. If you are returning Boolean value, you need to declare this as a Boolean. Okay. So the next one is method name. So it is actually a user defined choice. Okay. So Java does not recommend anything here. And the next one is parameters. Okay. So after the method name, we need to open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis. So within the parenthesis, we need to write the parameters. So here I have directly given params, right? So it is actually multiple parameters. You can pass one parameter or two parameters or n number of parameters actually. So these parameters can be of any data type. Like you can pass one integer, you can pass one string, you can pass one Boolean. Okay. So it is not like only you need to pass the string values, only you need to pass the integer values or something like that. Okay. So why we're actually passing these parameters. So for example, if you want to pass any information to the method, so let's say draw rectangle is a method. Okay. So in the draw rectangle method, we need to pass how much width you want to draw and how much height you want to draw, right? So those are the parameters or those are the inputs you can say. So those inputs are called as parameters. Okay. You want to pass these values outside the method. Okay. When you're calling this method, you want to pass those inputs. So that is why we are calling them as parameters. Okay. And next we need to write the throws keyword. And after the throws keyword, we need to mention what kind of exceptions this method can actually throw. So when you're writing any code, that code may contain any exception, right? So it may throw any exception. So those exceptions you can directly declare here. So that means you're actually saying that this method can return these kind of exceptions. Okay. So you are predefinedly declaring that, okay, these are the exceptions that this method can throw. So those exception list you need to mention here. Okay. So while you're writing multiple exceptions, you need to provide comma here. So in the similar way for parameters also, if you're passing multiple parameters, you need to use the comma. Okay. Then open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets within the curly brackets. We need to write the method body. So this can be anything. Actually, it is a Java code basically. Okay. So here I have given some example. So public static void test. 
so this public is a access modifier you can see here so i'm giving the visibility condition as a public okay so you can access this public method from anywhere and the next one is static that means you can call this method without creating any object okay and next we have void so this method is not actually returning anything right so that is why i'm declaring this as a void method okay and the method name is test so this is a user defined choice and next we have some parameters so what are the parameters i have one integer parameter and one string parameter and next we have throws keyword and here i have mentioned one exception io exception so when we are dealing with files the io exception is a common thing okay so here if you want to add any other exception then you can put a comma and you can add the exception name okay then we are opening the curly brackets and close the curly brackets and within the curly brackets i have written the java code right so i have just created the file instance here okay just to show you so this is how we actually create some methods okay and here one more important thing is whatever i have mentioned in the red color those keywords are the mandatory keywords okay so you cannot skip these keywords this axis modifier or return type or method name so these are the mandatory keywords okay so whatever i have mentioned in the blue color those are the optional keywords so if you want to provide them you can provide them but if you don't provide them also the method will be working okay so those are the optional keywords here so now what we will do let me open eclipse so here i will show you three examples okay the first example with a basic one okay basic method we are going to create so we are not going to pass any parameters or we are not going to return any value from the method so we are going to create a basic method and we are going to simply print a hello text in the console okay and the next example is we are going to create one method and pass some parameters to that method and utilize those parameters value inside the method okay and the third example is we are going to create one method and we will pass some parameters to the method and we will perform some operations then we will return the value from that method okay that means you are using the parameters and you are using the return type also in that method okay so let me show you all these three examples so first i will create one method here okay a simple method so i will say this is the example one okay so i want to create one method so first i need to declare one accessibility modifier right so i will declare it as public then i want to take the static keyword also okay so i don't want to create one object here so i'm declaring the static keyword also so i am not returning anything in the first example so it will be void then i need to provide the method name so i will simply say say hello so this say hello is the method name then open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis so in the first example i am not providing any parameters also okay so i am just closing this one then i'll just open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets so here i am not providing the throws keyword and everything also okay so inside this method i want to just write one sysout statement and print hello here okay so i am just printing hello nothing else okay so now i have created this method but i want to call this method right so if you want to execute the code present inside the method you need to call the method okay so every java program entry point is main method okay that means by default the control will come to this main method only so it will look for this main method and it will execute whatever is mentioned in the main method so if you want to execute this piece of code that is present inside another method then you need to call this method inside the main method okay so here i will say say hello okay so i am not passing any parameters values or anything i am not creating any object and calling this method also because this is a static method okay so i am directly calling this method okay so let me execute this so here in the console you can see it is printing hello right so whatever i have mentioned inside the method so that is only executing right so this is how we are going to use a basic method okay so one more advantage of this method is the reusability okay so here i have created the code only once but i can call this method multiple times okay so let me do that so i'm going to call this say hello method multiple times here okay so if i execute this first now i'm getting three hello statements here right but inside this program i am not writing anywhere three hello statements i have written this statement only once but i am reusing this method multiple times okay so that is why i am getting three times hello okay so that means the methods also provide the reusability concept okay so next let's move to the second example example 2 so this is with parameters so here first i'll create one method public static so this is also i'm declaring as static so i'm not returning anything here so it will be void and the method name is greet okay so here i'm going to pass one string value so i'll say the name and open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets so here in the second example what i'm going to do i want to say hello to the user okay so in the first example i'm simply saying the hello right 
So in the second example, I want to say hello to the user with the name what I have provided. Okay. For example, if I provide John, it should say hello John. Okay. So that means I'm going to use this data, right? So let me write the sysout statement. So first I'll write hello, then give a space and I need to concatenate this name, right? So I need to copy this name variable. So here, let me just call this method. So let me remove this. So the method name is greet, right? So here I need to provide some name. So I will say John. So after this, I need to put a semicolon. So let me execute this method. So here it is saying hello John. Okay. So if I change this one to John C. So what happens here? It will say hello John C. Okay. So that means with a different set of input, you are getting different output, right? So that is the main advantage of the parameters here. So you're going to pass a different value to the method and you're going to get a different output. Okay. So each time when you pass a different input, you are going to get a different output. So that is the second method. And in the third example, we are going to see with parameters as well as return type. Okay. And return value, you can say. So first let me create one method. So here in the third example, I want to add two numbers and I want to return the result of the two numbers. Okay. So I'll say static. So here I'm going to return the integer value, right? So I need to declare this as an int and the method name is add. So I want to add two numbers here, int i comma int j. Okay. Then open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets. So within the curly brackets, I need to add the code, right? So let me take the third variable that is k. Okay, so I want to store the result of this i plus j into this third variable. So i plus j. So now the result is stored inside the k variable, right? So I want to return this k variable value. So how can I do that? So you can use one return statement here. Okay, return is one keyword. You can use that keyword and provide the variable name here. Okay, so whatever you want to return that you need to provide here. Return and you need to provide that value then semicolon. So now this method will actually add these two numbers and it will return the result of these two numbers. Okay. So we are not printing anything inside the method. So we need to print outside of the method only, right? So when we are calling, we need to pass the values and we need to take the result of this one and we need to print that one. Okay. So now the method name is add. So I need to pass two values to this one. So let me say two comma three. Okay. So this is how we are going to call this method, right? So if you are using any parameters, you need to pass those parameters values here. So now we are calling this method. So we need to capture the output also, right? So this method is actually returning some value. So we need to capture that value, right? So I will say int result. So I'm capturing the result into this result variable. So now I want to print this result variable. Okay. So let me execute this method. So here you can see it is printing five. Okay. So the values I have provided is two comma three, two plus three is five, right? So if you change this one to 30, so let me execute again. Now you can see it is providing 32, right? So it is performing the operation inside the method and it is returning the result outside, right? So here I'm capturing that result and I'm printing in the console. Okay. So this is how you need to use the methods. So in the first example, I'm just showing you how you can create one basic method and you can print the values. Okay. You can perform some actions. So you're not passing any parameters or you are not returning any values also. So this is a basic method. And in the second example, I'm creating one method with some parameters. Okay. So I'm utilizing these parameters inside the method also. So this is a second example. And in the third example, I'm passing some parameters and I'm performing some operations. Then I'm returning some value out of the method. Okay. So this is how you need to use the methods basically. So that is for this video guys. I hope you enjoy this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends. So if you are facing any issues while writing the program or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.